Starting from now, we are going to get started with the session two, carbon neutral and green finance. I am at the coordinator and, and at the moderator for each session at this forum. My name is Toru Kurahashi. Nice to meet you all. Now, with no further ado, we will like to kindly ask Professor Shirai from the KO University Faculty of Policy Management and the former member of the Policy Board of the Bank of Japan to provide us with a talk. Uh, her title is What's requ Required of the Development of the finance, Green Finance? Over to you, Uju. Please turn on your microphone and speak into the Japanese channel. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. <clears throat> Sayuri Shirai is my name. Uh, very sorry, I can't turn my video on, but I think you can hear me, so I'd like to share my screen. I hope you can see my screen. Yes, we can. Uh, the material is written in English, but I would like to speak in Japanese because I was requested to do so. So I would like to sh share my English uh, language slide and j speak in Japanese. I'm teaching at the university, and I'm also advisor of Sustainable Policies at ADBI, which is located in uh, Malaysia. We have a joint project with the ADBI Research Institute. So in Asia, how climate finance market can be developed. The regulatory authorities are talking with each other. And from information disclosure, uh, we would like, the project would like to standardize. So from that uh, experience, uh, in terms of climate uh, finance, uh, based on my experience, I would like to talk to you about that. So first, I would like to talk about climate finance in general. And the latter part, hard to abate high emission industries. Uh, but uh, because of technology in uh, manufacturing, uh, re uh, emission reduction is required. So I would like to talk about climate finance and then uh, the trend of that. So if you look at the world, ESG investment is increasing in terms of amount. And ESG, as you can see here, E stands for environment, uh, climate change is included, and S is social, uh, human rights is included. Also G is governance, the, based on the board of directors and in, in corporates, uh, the positioning of the top management. And uh, by looking at the world, ES, within ESG, where standardization now and going forward will progress in climate change environmental issue area. The climate change information disclosure is being in the process of being standardized. And also biodiversity issue is progressing as well. For the social aspect, you know, democratic uh, countries, it's not as if there is an abundance of such countries, and depending on the country, there are various ideologies. So concerning S, global standardization may be quite difficult to achieve. Uh, women empowerment, and uh, to Im improving the labor environment probably will progress, but standardization may be quite difficult. And in terms of governance, depending on the company, especially in Asia, uh, there are various ways of thinking. So Western type of thinking it will not necessarily spread. And currently, yeah. so here I will be talking about climate, mainly climate change related. So as you know now, climate change, there is physical risk and transition risk. So there are two risks involved. The X is the physical risk, and currently uh, with the with BAU as the current policies compared to pre-industrial revolution, uh, the uh, global warming will progress. They will be well above two degrees, and uh, with this physical risk will increase. Uh, but decarbonization policies is not sufficient, and therefore risk transition risk is not that high. And by 2050, we want to achieve net zero. So economic policies and 
citizens, consciousness, awareness, as well as investors. We need to change all of that to achieve this. And net zero. By 2050, the government is saying that we need to achieve net zero. Net zero. More than 100 countries have committed to that. So how can this be achieved? The government will have to implement carbon pricing and also implement environmental regulations as well as emissions restrictions. So the government policy is most important, needless to say. And because there is government policy, then corporate uh, behavior will change. And at the same time, as you can see on the right-hand bottom, for a sustainable finance market, climate finance market, need to develop. We cannot rely only on government policies to change corporate behavior, because in order to change corporate behavior, investment is required. So the private sustainable financial market to support uh, investment is required. And uh, civil society, which is on the left-hand side, is also very important. Civil society will be monitoring the government policy and will mon be monitoring the financial markets as well and voicing their views so that they will be playing the role of check and balance. And in terms of climate finance, well, the major players, there are many, left-hand side, uh, the industrial companies need to take actions to achieve net zero or else government uh, wide net zero is not possible. So in order to change corporate behavior uh, in terms of finance, there are many groups organized and they're becoming increasingly active. So as you can see on the right hand side, voluntary, these are voluntary financial institutions for net zero uh, to change the corporate behavior uh, of corporates to whom they provide loans and investment is uh, G funds and IIGCC. And companies information disclosure to promote that. Uh, there are various disclosure mechanisms to impose pressure on companies. So these activities are being done by ISSB, that's most uh, famous, as well as CDP, CAC, CAC, 100 plus. And in addition to that, central banks, central banks monitor banks. So central banks, so vis-a-vis -vis the banks and financial institutions, the central banks activities and the banks activities which central banks monitor, so these need to change. So positive pressure is being imposed by NGFC, FS. So this is a group of central banks across the world, and they have issued various guidelines as well. So in the financial world, there are various activities currently underway. In that, in the world, there are green bonds. The insurance of green bonds is increasing. Left-hand side shows climate only climate change related bonds. The blue is the global issuance throughout the world per year of green bonds. And the green is the sustainability linked bonds. So green bonds are limited only to green environmentally friendly projects. Sustainability linked bonds, the purpose is not restricted, however, the initial target needs to be set, for example, to what extent GHG will be reduced. And if the target is met, uh, then perhaps uh, the interest repayment conditions will be relaxed. And we are seeing promotion of these markets. Left hand side, the issuance is increasing and the outstanding is on the right hand side. And uh, there's been increase $2 trillion throughout the world. Next. The issuance by country is shown. Green bonds issuance is prevalent mainly in China. That is the orange bar. Huge amount of green bonds are being issued. And the Germany is dark green. So EU overall is the largest green bond market in the world. But if you look at uh, each country base, the China's green bond issuance is extremely high and other emerging companies, countries and developing countries have not been able to issue such. Um, so, so aside from China, 
Green bonds are mainly issued by the industrialized countries, and gradually the market is being developed. And we, Japan, we are located in Asia, so if you look at Asia, green bond issuance in Asia is very limited. China is of a different order, completely different. So China has been issuing green bonds very actively, but the left-hand side shows the other countries and regions, Hong Kong, Japan, South Korea. Uh, these are the only countries issuing green bonds now, so it's not as if the market is active in Asia. So we are not seeing an increase in green bond issuance, and uh, same thing can be said in Japan as well. And uh, the amount is much lower, but if you look at this in more detail, for example, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore, uh, issuance is increasing, but green, uh, excuse me, yellow is Singapore, noticeably high. In Asia, in terms of climate finance, huge advanced leadership role is being taken and highly uh, recognized is Singapore. I will be talking about this later on as well. You're very innovative. Transition finance, which I will be talking about later, and they have are starting to create a new framework. So Singapore and the ASEAN 10 countries, as ASEAN United, are trying to create a climate finance market. So they are working, uh, collaborating together. Next. The green bond issuance, if you look at this by currency, the euro is the highest, uh, followed by the U.S. dollar. So, it's not as if the issuers, I mean in Europe, it's EU, green bond market is the most mature. So, non-EU uh, companies are issuing in euro denomination. Now, one example. So, for example, in terms of the green bond issuance, one hundred percent means that all of the green bonds are issued in their local currency. But Japan, South Korea, Hong Kong, where issuance is high, sixty-six percent, forty percent, thirty-five percent, mean that there are many cases when the green bonds are issued in foreign currency, the domestic market green bond market is not that developed. So as mentioned earlier, euro denominated or in Europe where the uh, market is developed, uh, there are many cases when the issuance is done there. So it's not as if the market is yet that mature in Asia. So if we want to increase the issuance, it's not only local currency, but there are many cases uh, issuing in, in EU as well. Malaysia, Philippines, Thailand, uh, the issuance amount is quite low, so they are being consumed within their own countries. Next, looking at it from the fund perspective, there are many funds. Mutual fund is also one fund, and amongst all of these funds, climate-related funds. The, how much are the AUM assets? So as you can see, it's mainly Europe. We were looking at bonds earlier on, and even if you look at it from the fund perspective, it's almost dominated by Europe. And uh, that is followed by China, U.S. very limited. In the bond market, China, U.S., uh, they had a large presence, but if you look at the fund market, aside from Europe, it's not yet developed. So, Japan and Asia is almost close to zero. The market is extremely small. And green you, green you. The institutional investors, uh, there are many. So in terms of, they, this is a phenomenon that is shown where many people want to invest in green bonds. Well, when purchasing green bonds, compared to the principal, the price is very high, but still uh, they want to purchase green bonds. So green you. In these areas, return is low. So for the investors, the return is not high, so it should not be attractive. But still, they want to purchase green bonds, and that is called greenium. As you can see on the left-hand side, this is euro-denominated. 
negative is the compared to the corporate bonds of the issuers, the yield is low because of the greenium phenomenon. And left hand side is euro denominated and right hand side is US dollar denominated. And you see greenium. In Asia there is no greenium, it's said. Because the institutional investors need to develop and the institutional investors need to be motivated to invest more in climate change related bonds or they want to make their portfolio at net zero by 2050. So unless we see such motivated uh, institutional investors, greenium will not be seen. I'm going back to Asia here, now going forward in the world. Clean energy investment is required mainly in Asia. Same goes for now, even if we are to exclude China, like uh, the area where which would have the largest amount of the GHG emission and the biggest challenges are said to be Asia. What you see here is an estimate made by IEA. Please refer to uh, the center. The 2022, that's the actual uh, the amount investment against the clean energy is being shown. As for the emerging countries as a whole, $773 billion, as you can see. Out of which China is large, and they have $5.1 billion, $511 million of investment. Even if we are to in, uh, total up at the advanced all the advanced country, it is only the half of China, therefore by far the China is the largest. In case of China, by 2050, they need to, uh, under the scenario that they are going to achieve uh, the net zero, how much investment do you need to, do they need to require? They need to, if they would be able to double the amount of the investment, they said that they are going to be able to achieve that goal. Uh, but in case of the Southeast Asia or the South Asia in countries like India, as 30 billion or the 80, 82 billion is just about the amount of the investment, therefore, for these countries to be net zero, about six or at eight times the amount of the investment compared to now would be required. But as I mentioned in the beginning, well, almost no money is flowing, floating in, flowing into the region. Uh, this is IMS data uh, based on the data available. Uh, this is being done in that sense. There are some issues, uh, but the banks uh, would uh, provide loans to companies. And based on the bank loans, uh, uh, by providing funds to uh, the companies, um, um, uh, uh, how much emission uh, is being generated is being shown. For example, countries like Philippines and Indonesia, according to the graph, is showing the increase, meaning that uh, there are many loans provided for the power sectors in Asia. There is a lot of uh, the coal, therefore, in Asia, uh, we would have to work on decarbonization or else uh, well, carbon uh, emission uh, is going to stay high as a, com a country as a whole. And the financial institution would not be able to decarbonize. That's the kind of issue that we see here. So I, would, I, mean, I was at the part one, so let's move on to part two. So what are, uh, oh, by the way, I would like to explain further more about the challenges as a part two. The climate, why, why is it that the climate finance is not matured enough in the world? There are three reasons. One being that there is a shortage of data. The basic data has not been standardized at this moment. What I mean by a standard standard data includes, well, we currently talk about the so-called scope one, scope two, scope three as a part of the GHG protocol. We have such a system available. Scope one stands for the emissions from the, your own companies, whereas scope two stands for uh, uh, the, uh, the emissions related to power that you would purchase. So indirect emissions, that is, and the, the biggest uh, a difficulty lies in at uh, scope three. Let's say that there is a company A. Well, scope three includes the emissions by users and suppliers, which is very difficult. Uh, but if we do not work on the scope three calculation, then you would not be able to uh, make progress in the reduction of the CO2 emission. And there is not much information disclosure. And European institutional investors are quite active. Uh, to Japanese and Asian countries, they are applying pressure, uh, but the domestic financial institutions are not having a high awareness. Therefore, domestic financial institutions 
have not been able to engage enough enough with the Japanese companies uh, to change the behavior of the Japanese companies, meaning domestic financial institutions and domestic financial authorities would have to have higher awareness about the climate change. I think that is a requirement. But I'm worried. Lastly, there are many, many disclosures, it seems, to be uh, have been made, uh, but without any uh, the standards, disclosure is being done. And therefore, well, uh, there are many, many uh, uh, variation amongst the disclosure being made by uh, the companies. Uh, because of the companies tend to cherry pick what they disclose, and uh, they have a propensity of not disclosing what is not green. And because of the investors have not been able to make comparison, unfortunately, with the current uh, the disclosure, investors would not be able to make investment uh, without having a worry about uh, the greenwashing. Furthermore, well, when I have a talk with Asian financial uh, 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 well, uh, competent authorities, what well, I see is that the companies uh, will have to pay lots of costs and be, uh, in issuing uh, the green and uh, the bond. Because of that, they do not have the incentive to issue. And furthermore, there is no premium available, and there is no demand in Asia, which I believe is the reason behind uh, the non-maturity of the Asian market. And because of the timing and availability, I would like to skip. And what's catching lots of attention is the so-called ESG ratings. Well, there is a credit rating in for uh, the bond and so on. And Fitch and S&P and Moody's, uh, the, these are known to be the three largest uh, data, and they would give rating like the triple A and so on, just like that. In the world, uh, there are about 12 companies uh, that are doing something similar. And such data provider is asking the companies uh, to uh, provide information uh, in regards to, uh, and they would and then uh, the rate would give a rating and investors would purchase that. But there is an issue. The disclosure of the companies uh, is not uh, sufficient. There is a lot of missing data. And the data provider, uh, with ambiguous, ambiguous way, they are showing the estimates. That's an issue. Meaning that uh, there are many, many issues, really. Well, against the company A, well, the three data provides I would provide at the rating, and there is a huge variation among the three. So, depending on which data you would purchase from which company, the investment judgment is going to make a big difference in the last two or three years. It's been a big issue in the UK and EU. They are going to start the regulation. Well, that is issue. Another issue I talked about the green bond and sustainability linked bond in the beginning. Actually, they are called the labeled bond. So uh, they are issued in the following way. Companies would say, uh, let's say that I'm a company A, and I would say that if I want to per uh, issue a uh, green bond, then what I would have to do is for myself to be able to utilize a uh, green bond, ICMA and the CBI. I would have to talk to them because uh, they are uh, making lots of regulations, the, the rules, and third party uh, debating agents would uh, take a look at the green project being conducted by uh, the company A to see whether it is in line uh, with the standards as a second opinion. And if that's uh, being uh, certified, then the label can be used. But unfortunately, standard is very, very loose. Even if you see uh, the two different uh, the green bonds, the quality would uh, have a big difference between uh, the countries. Therefore, it's not that you can feel assured just because it's a green bond. So the quality of the green bond is under question. OECD is currently putting a lot of focus here in the next year there is going to be a conference to be held so such is an issue so currently ESG industries are available and there are many players but no disclosure is sufficient at this moment so we have not being able to see the establishment of the credible market at this moment but finally we are starting to see some positive signs well, uh, the climate change related information disclosure is starting to make progress. Originally, there was a TCFD at the guidance that had been created in 17 and year 21. And because of that, the climate change related information at the sharing, together with the governance risk management and the metrics and also indicators at the well, at the disclosure uh, uh, had been required, but that still has not 
and disseminated sufficiently, and sufficient data disclosure didn't happen, therefore standardization didn't occur. So investors started to become dissatisfied. And they felt uh, that uh, the more uh, the just disclosure would be necessary. With that, ISSP standards had been established in June 2023, and it's going to start uh, from the next year. And Japan has been spending two years to think as to how we apply this, but the EU had already started to embed this. The, uh, Australia, the UK, and also ASEAN have already decided to adopt this. Singapore had uh, is going to do this quickly as well. So we may have to take some time, uh, but in the world ISSP is expected to be adopted through Throughout the world, but it doesn't mean uh, that, that the ISSP is perfect. Unfortunately, when it comes to the ISSP, the net zero, uh, well, they didn't include net zero target. Therefore, it doesn't mean uh, that the information disclosure is enough with ISSP. As I said, as a whole industry, what's required is that the green label equality is being improved. Yes, yes, she provide. We would have to lift up the situation from the bottom, or else. Well, we will not be able to uh, the source uh, the, uh, provide the source of the money uh, where it is required the most. Let me use up the last of the three minutes. Well, out of the climate finance, steel and cement, and, and the chemical, where uh, we do not have uh, the mature technology to decarbonize in these areas, what is what matter is how we would be able to source the money. That's the transition money, uh, transition finance. That's the hard to abate, and that takes up about thirty percent of the GHG emission. And sometimes we include electricity as a part of the hard to abate sectors. Of course, there are renewables, uh, but in case we use coal or the gas fired power, but uh, if we are to include that. And then uh, uh, that would be about GH 25% of the GHG emission, meaning uh, that in total 50% uh, of the GHG emission in the world is about it is at the heart to abate sector. So not much money is uh, being spent there. So as to how we would be able to draw in the funds to Asia here is going to be the big issue. But as you can see, and, uh, well, uh, the coal power plant is new and average age of the coal power plant in Asia is 14 years. So it's impossible to replace every one of them. Partly, uh, the completed coal power plant uh, would have to be uh, would have to uh, be uh, worked on so that uh, the uh, the emission can be uh, reduced. And thinking about uh, the increase in population of uh, the Asia, actually, it is going to be difficult. Uh, the, for transition financing, is going would have to be uh, necessary. As you can see here, not only the renewable things like the CCS, hydrogen, and also. Uh, what Singapore and ASEAN have decided to do is under the certain condition uh, to try to uh, phase out uh, the, uh, the existing coal as, as fast as possible so that we can replace with the renewables. Uh, but without money, that is impossible. Therefore, in order to bring the money, reliable and taxonomy would be required. And they have just launched it. But there is an issue. Uh, well, uh, the definition of the transition finance is, uh, it does vary. As I said, well, uh, uh, the the, techno well, uh, the technology is will really be required for uh, the hard to abate uh, the sectors, and we see, we see the Japan and countries like well, Singapore, and uh, 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 adopt such uh, the thoughts. But currently, the G funds had recently announced one thing. They say uh, that the whole economy would have to go uh, become net zero. So they are trying to uh, transition uh, the whole economy. So meaning that we have different transition finance definitions. And so it seems that there is a confusion here. And lastly, against the backdrop, ASEAN and the Singapore. Well, let me talk about the details. Uh, the point that I would like to get across here is that basically uh, the EU is mostly focused on to the green part. The natural gas and uh, the autom uh, well, uh, atomic energy are included. Uh, but what is great about uh, ASEAN is that they came up with uh, the amber, uh, the, uh, the green amber. Uh, the, the amber is the transition and against uh, the amber, uh, the clear threshold and the so-called sunset. Right? Uh, 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 to uh, change uh, to uh, the green or uh, uh, to be rated as the red. Uh, such a system had been launched and introduced for the first time in the world, so they are focusing on the transition so that they would be able to come up with a taxonomy which is reliable. So, uh, Singapore, out of all the countries, is most advanced. And lastly, I would like to talk about the green and transition bond. Well, a transition bond basically is being issued only by Japan and China. To the left, you can see a green bond, and orange stands for the transition bond. And currently, China is not increasing additional 
issue once a transition bond. But what's interesting is that Japan well, is accelerating its issuance of the transition bond more than uh, the green bond. So the whole government is talking about the transition bond. So they are putting at the efforts. Uh, but in the world, uh, the issuance of the uh, transition uh, the bonds, the momentum for that has not built up against the backdrop. Well, uh, as for myself, between the ADBI and ADB, we had launched new project uh, between the co competent authorities well, each Asian country is doing different things uh, uh, for the finance, but we would like to uh, share uh, the information in order to enhance the interoperability. So we are trying to unify what's happening in Asia. In order to avoid that disintegration, uh, we would like to have the deeper understanding of the uh, the, uh, the, C, uh, the competent authority. So we have launched this unofficial at uh, the forum uh, as a part of the ASEAN Plus 3 capacity building efforts will be uh, conducted against uh, Asian countries. And in uh, the two years from now, we are going to set up the website at the ADB where Asian competent authorities would be able to understand what sort of uh, well, uh, the disclosure is being conducted. Uh, we are going to set up this, uh, the, the portal where uh, people would be able to see uh, the whole information. And uh, with that, I would like to conclude my talk. Thank you. Uh, Professor Shirai, thank you very much.